In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the five packs that I think you should be buying next to expand your Earth's Mightiest Core box in Marvel Crisis Protocol for 2024. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Big Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. And yes, Christmas is not that far away. Maybe you've already got your Earth Mightiest Core Box, or maybe you know that Santa is leaving one under the tree for you. Either way, whether you've got the box or not, whether you're new to the game, old to the game, the idea of this video is to take a look at the core box itself, or in particular, the five leaders that come in there, and then look at five packs that can help expand those five leaderships, those five affiliations, just to give you more playability, with quite a bit of crossover in between each of the packs as well. Okay guys, so the core box itself um, brings us five leaders, five brand new leaders to the game, all from five different affiliations. So we have got Doc Ock, obviously representing the spider foes. We've got the brand new Red Skull representing Cabal, the new four threat version of Baron Helmet Zemo uh, representing Hydra. We've of course got a Captain America representing the Avengers and the new Invincible Iron Man who is representing S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so what I wanted to do with these packs was take a look at where we can get the most value from um, and also where we can get the most crossover. So looking for characters, looking for packs uh, that can fit multiple ones uh, of these affiliations just to give you the chance to ex extend and expand not just one affiliation out but multiple affiliations with just five boxes. And with these five boxes, you're going to be able to build yourself um, five pretty competitive rosters, actually six pretty competitive rosters uh, that I think definitely if you're starting out with the game uh, will be great um, beginner friendly rosters uh, and what I'll do with those, we're not going to go through them in this video uh, but I will leave links down in the description below to each one of those rosters that I've built including tactics cards and everything else. Now again, I'm not going to go into tactics cards and I'm not going to go into crisis cards um, on this particular video. We're just looking at the characters um, and the reason why I'm not going to worry too much about them is crisis cards are all available free to download and really guys I would not recommend going out there and buying a character box just for a tactics card um, especially if you're playing casual games or just games at a local gaming store. Um, I would just print them out put them in a sleeve and play with them and ask a TO if it is a ranked event or something like that but I highly highly doubt that any TO wouldn't let you use a printed out version of the card itself. Some of them are available on AMG's website to be able to print out for yourself anyway. So before we do jump into the actual packs themselves, um, I just want to mention one other character who is in the core box. He wasn't in the original core box. Um, he's a, a not a brand new character to the game, but he's a character that wasn't included previously. Um, and that is Winter Soldier Operative. So the newer version of Bucky, uh, James Bucky Barnes. Um, and Contrary to what I've said in a previous video, I did leave a comment as well. Uh, he isn't a rogue agent. He can't be used with anybody you want, but he is affiliated with four of the five affiliations that are included in this core box. So that does make it much, much easier when we're looking to um, buy characters to bulk out our or by character pack, sorry, to bulk out our rosters because we've got one character there who can be in four of them, making it much, much easier and making it much, much more affordable as well. So kudos to AMG for that. And with all that said and done, let's jump in to pack number one, which is going to be CP76, Baron Strucker and Arnim Zola. Um, why are these guys good and why have I picked them. Well, first of all, let's take a look at the affiliations that they can be in. Um, we've got Cabal and we've got Hydra, so two of the affiliations uh, there that come in the core box. 
but also they're both three threat characters. And in this new core box, there is a real lack of lower threat characters. They're all sort of four or higher. I think there's one, maybe two, three threats in there at the most. Um, so yeah, having some extra three threats does make squad building, does make roster building that much easier. And generally you want a couple of three threats uh, in your roster just so you can be able just so you can flex up and flex down to you know from a, a 15 to a 16 or to a, from a 17 to an 18 something like that um we also get guys an additional leadership here as well so we've got the hydra high council uh, on baron strucker so it does give us an extra leadership that we can play with obviously increasing the uh, flexibility and the competitiveness of the Hydra roster that we can build. Um, and they're both really, really good characters. Um, you often see them in both Cabal and Hydra anyway. So they're a welcome addition to both of those affiliations and or both of those rosters that you're going to be building out. Um, so yeah, recommend picking this up, especially if you want to go down the side of, you know, the evil geniuses, because that's very much what they are representing. Okay, guys, moving on to our second pack, and it is going to be CP58, Lizard, and Craven. Again, they are both three threat characters, so some welcome lower threat uh, level characters to the, the pool that we've got to pick from when we're building our rosters out. The one downside to both of these is that they are only uh, affiliated with uh, spider foes, or should I say they're only affiliated with spider foes for the purposes of this video. They obviously both have other affiliations as well. Um, Lizard being part of Criminal Syndicate. Now, there is a slight crimson play here as well because we do have crossbones in this core box um but you know if you want to go down the route of expanding out um with uh, doc ock and looking at that spider force leadership this is absolutely where i would start or it would have been where i would start um if we kind of didn't get it revealed or i think we got it revealed somebody told me this was a mandela effect i'll do more research and i will pin a comment but I am of the belief that there is, uh, or there has been announced, a spider Foes affiliation box coming out. Now, what is an affiliation box? Well, basically what AMG do is they typically take two older character packs, so four characters in total, um, take all their cards, everything they would have come with, and put them into <clears throat> excuse me, a single box. Um, you've seen it with the likes of... Uh, X-Men with Brotherhood of Mutants with Web Warriors and I am 99% sure that I have seen this one announced as well um, so this one is slightly different however because rather being a combination of two character packs with two in each it's a combination of one duo character pack with Lizard and Craven a single character pack in Green Goblin and going forward, um, it's probably going to be the only way that you're going to be able to get your hands on the original Dr. Octopus. Um, now, just to cover off Dr. Octopus and how he would work with the uh, new version in the Earth's Mightiest core box, um, whilst you can't field or have two of the same characters with the same alias, so his alias is Otto Octavius. Um, so you can't have two of them on the table at the same time. You can have multiple characters with the same alias in your roster. And once again, because Green Goblin comes with that Oscorp weaponry leadership for the spider foes, it does mean that you can swap the old version and the new version out. One of them is three threat, one of them is four threat, which is quite nice. Again, gives you some more playability and just adds a little bit of competitiveness uh, into, um, into the game and into what you're playing. Um, <clears throat> I will also say that I don't think when I've built my rosters out that I've used any of these characters in any of the other rosters themselves. Lizard is a great character, by the way, and would work um, pretty well in any of the others. Just in this instance, we do have better options. Um, so this is very much an optional pack. Um, so, you know, if you're not looking to expand out on your spider foes, then I wouldn't recommend it because we didn't use any of the other characters in there. Um, but if you are wanting a spider foes roster, 
either the lizard or craven pack or if you can wait until probably february march next year uh you're probably going to be able to get your hands on that spider foes affiliation pack instead and sorry guys i forgot to mention um you also get um a benefit in a huge price reduction as well um typically a character pack um, or a two standard size two person character pack um, is going to be costing $40 list price, £40 list price. We always have to pay more in the UK. Um, but for these packs, they're generally priced at $60 or $59.99. Um, so quite a big saving to get your hands um, so it's only $20 more to get your hands on two additional characters. So um, if you can wait, I would definitely recommend it because it is going to be better value for you in the long run. Okay then guys, the next pack uh, that I am going to recommend you take a look at is going to be CP100 Agent Venom and Spider Woman. Now Agent Venom's fine. He's pretty good. He is another four threat, um, which, you know, is what it is, but he's a pretty damn good character, uh, and he's a character that could benefit from quite a few of the leaderships um, in uh, that come in the core box itself, but the character that we really want from this box is going to be Spider-Woman, aka Jessica Drew. She is an exceptional character. Again, she is a four threat, uh, but she's a very very good for threat and once again she's going to be covering off a lot of the affiliations that we have in this core box so she's going to be part of avengers hydra and shield yes she's been a naughty girl in her past as jessica drew uh, she has been both a shield agent and a hydra agent as well and has also been in the avengers um so again really really recommend picking this box up um both characters are absolutely solid and you get so much playability with spider woman in multiple different affiliations these two also lean into the spectacular spider-man as well um so i haven't included it in here but if you did want to go down the web warriors route you could pick up this core box you could pick up that aforementioned web warriors affiliation pack that i mentioned um so i think in there you get um uh, ghost spider you get um who else do you get in there? You get Ghost Spider, you get Miles, and a couple of others in there as well. Uh, but then with Spectacular Spider-Man and these two, you're going to have the core of a really, really good Web Warriors team as well. So something else just to consider. Okay, guys, so for this next one, I really wanted to bring a two-threat character into the game. And I went through a whole I went through the whole list and had a look at what would work and what wouldn't work. And you know, Rocket and Groot is a really good pack to bring along. They're a great little deadly duo, as we covered off in some of our previous videos. But I actually went with uh, CP30, an older character pack, Bullseye and Daredevil, but both characters that have had a bit of a glow up of late. So we've got Bullseye, uh, his new two threat version, obviously affiliated with Cabal, uh, but could very, very easily fit into a Hydra list, could also easily fit into uh, an Avengers list or even a shield list as well. And maybe even a spider Force actually as a, as a two threat option if you wanted to include it in there. But we also get um, access to the new version of Daredevil, AKA Matt Murdock, who brings us another leadership. Now it is a it is another completely brand new affiliation that we don't get um, in the uh, core box itself. So it is the Defenders and it is the Marvel Knights Defenders. Um, but when I was adding in, and you'll slight spoiler alert, when I was adding in a lot of my Avengers characters, I realized that there's a huge crossover between Avengers and Defenders. Um, a lot of them are, you know, a lot of the Defenders are Avengers as well. Um, so I decided to go with um, with Daredevil. Um, he is a four threat, but again, the extra value that we get from this is the fact that, you know, not only is he a really good four threat, and actually you can fit him in Avengers, you can fit him in S.H.I.E.L.D. and he's going to work really, really well. Um, but he does bring us that extra leadership. Now, my other thought on this was going to be Doctor Strange and Wong. Um, again, they bring a Defenders leadership um, and they bring us a two-threat character. And I would say that 
Um, I'd say Wong brings a little bit more utility to the game than what Bullseye does. So as a more generic character, as a support character, as somebody who can turn things on round one for characters, Wong and Doctor Strange are probably a better option. The thing that sort of sealed the deal for me, whether it should have done or not, is that CP23 under timeline is not is is you can't play either of them, whereas you can play both of them uh, with um, Bullseye and Daredevil in the timeline rule. I know that not everybody is going to be playing timeline. I know it's not um, something that we're going to see a lot of, uh, but that was just the one thing because it was so close. That was just the one thing um, that swayed it for me. But yeah, not only do we get a, a two threat, whichever box you go for, uh, we're also going to get uh, access to a brand new affiliation for ourselves as well. Okay then guys, so I've mentioned uh, that there were many characters that were Defenders that were Avengers and my next pick is going to be CP49, moving away from all of the bad guys now, we've left them in the past, um, or mostly anyway, CP49, Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, both characters are affiliated with Avengers and Defenders. Again, both three threat characters. Um, they bring some really, really nice tactics cards with them. Um, again, don't worry too much about tactics cards. If you don't have access to the generic ones, print them off and use them. But, you know, if you're going to play Heroes for Hire, you need either Iron Fist or Luke Cage on the board. Um, so you need to buy the pack anyway. Um, but yeah, so much, much needed three threats um, for the Avengers. And because this version... Um, in the core box of Steve doesn't have the, sorry, Captain America, Steve Rogers doesn't have the bodyguard. Luke Cage does a really, really good job of filling that void that the original Captain America leaves behind. Iron Fist is okay. He's got a couple of tricks up his sleeve. I do find that he often goes down a little bit too quickly, but again, building out, looking at your first affiliations, um, I think Iron Fist is going to be absolutely fine and do a perfectly good job for you, um, particularly alongside Luke Cage. And rounding it out, guys, with my number five box. These, by the way, were in no particular order. I kind of just started with the bad guys and worked through. Uh, this is a bit of a mix of both, uh, but it is going to be CP40, Wolverine and Sabretooth. Um, now, while Sabretooth does come in this box, and you guys know, I really, really like the OG version of Sabretooth. And I think, you know, he can work really, really well uh, under the Cabal leadership that he is part of. He would also work well under Hydra, particularly under Baron Strucker, if you've bought that other box as well, because he is dishing out that bleed. And as we know, his leadership is all around manipulation of um, of special effects and that sort of thing. The real reason that we've bought this box, brought this box along, guys, is going to be the brand new version of Wolverine, James Logan Howler. If you guys saw my um, splash characters with my very special guest the other day, uh, you'll know that I absolutely love this new version of Wolverine or this revamped version of the old version of Wolverine. He's definitely the best at what he does. Um, whilst he is only an Avenger and he is only part of Defenders, if we're getting that, you know, that extra card in there, um, he can go really, I would say he can go under any of these leaderships and in any roster at the moment, and he's going to be absolutely brilliant. If you can find a way of getting a power onto him, early doors, um, take those cards that I talked about in my previous video. Um, he's going to do absolute work. He is an absolute powerhouse. But, but I also want to mention, guys, that, as I mentioned with a couple of the others, um, rather than buying this $39.99 box with just two characters in, there is another option uh, where you can pick up the X-Men affiliation pack now you would lose Sabretooth but I would say that this isn't um this isn't a huge loss I would say for these particular lists um you do get access to Cyclops and Storm so you're getting access to the X-Men leadership as well 
Um, Beast is also affiliated with the Avengers. Um, so again, it's another character that can that can fit in there. And once again, you're getting this at a much, much reduced cost uh, than you would be if you went out and bought these characters individually. And actually, um, I, I always thought quite annoyingly, um, a couple of these characters, as you've seen, um, are um, in packs that you maybe don't want. Maybe you want to go down the X-Men route and you're not bothered about Brotherhood of Mutants. So buying Wolverine and getting Sabretooth feels like a bit of a waste of money. Well, it was very similar with Beast and Mystique. So in the Beast box, it was Beast and Mystique, but they've now been separated out. You can still get them individually. I don't know where they are with like, whether they're doing reprints and things like that. Um, but if you, again, if you do want to go down the X-Men route, whilst X-Men isn't part of this uh, core box, um, this is a really, really nice, easy pack uh, to be able to get into them. Um, and there we go, guys. That is the, they're, they're the five, maybe eight packs. <laughs> I always like to sneak some extras in there, but no, I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware that the, these affiliation packs existed. We know that more are coming in the future. As I mentioned, it's going to be um, moving forward the only way that you'll be able to get access to uh, the um, older versions of those of those characters. Um, so yeah, and as I mentioned, they're also really, really good value for money. $12.50, or is that right? No, $15 per character rather than the 20. Uh, plus you get all of the cards that come in there as well. So um, let me know what you think down in the comment section below, guys. Is there any other packs that you would recommend? We've got a great community here. So if anybody out there has got other ideas as to uh, what, what character packs you would recommend purchasing first after getting your Earth's Mightiest Heroes core box, let me know down in the comment section below. Guys, I want to um, just ask everyone viewing that isn't subscribed, um, if you've watched one or two of my videos and you know you've enjoyed them in any way, shape, or form, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe bu uh, button, um, we are. I just checked on. I checked on Social Blade. I'm sad. I go on Social Blade and I see the trajectory of my channel and where it's going. And right now, it's saying that if we get the same number of um, subscribers that we would get normally, um, we would be getting six thousand subscribers on the 7th of January, which is actually one day before my birthday, but I set myself a personal goal of hitting 6,000 subscribers before the end of 2023. So if you have watched the videos, if you have enjoyed it, if you could hit that subscribe button, uh, it's completely free, it costs you nothing, and it really, really does help out the channel. Um, if you do want to help the channel out even further, you can do so by heading on over to Patreon and supporting us over there. I don't know why I call it Patreon, 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 I don't know. Um, there'll be a link down in the description below. Uh, there'll also be a link to our Discord server as well. It's completely free to join. And we talk about MCP, Shatterpoint Plus, a whole bunch of other things as well. Um, and as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.